and we should have more coming in soon. Welcome to ELT Techniques. My name is Jason R. Levine. I'm also known as Fluency MC, and I'm here today to present to you a wonderful teacher, amazing guy, the online teaching sensation and new video creation man, Jack Askew, and he'll be with us in a moment. But first, I'd like to welcome all of you English teachers across the world. Tell us where you're from, who you are, where you're from. Take a little peek at the chat box here. Claudia's here. Tell us where you're from, even though I know where some of you are from by now. <laughs> Navila's Algeria, Victoria from France. Slavka from Bulgaria. How many countries? Someone do the counting today. I'm terrible at this. Barbara's here from Greece. Claudia, yes, I know you're from Argentina. Fatima from Yemen. Dimitris Kavifel representing from Greece. Olga from Mexico. Gordana from Serbia. Vicky Hallett from Philadelphia. Does anyone know where I am right now? Because I'm also from Philadelphia today. Vicky, can you say it? Vicky's going to say this is my second home, and Vicky and Jay's. Uh, where else? Where else? Where else? Colombia, Andres from Colombia. Fabiola saying hello. Claudia saying hello. And Jay, that's right. Safa's here from Egypt. Wonderful, wonderful. We have from the Wiz IQ support team, the world famous Sadiq is here. He's going to be watching over us and making sure everything's working fine. And you know it from the background, right? Dora says hello to Dora in Mexico. Jack Askew should be here momentarily. We're going to beam him in and get him going on his presentation here. You can see the title, How to Effectively Use Online Tools and Resources excuse me, for your students, with your students rather, and that is similar, in the title is similar to what Shelly Terrell did and everybody loved. And this is a different sort of presentation, uh, similar in the sense that the uh, suggestions Jack has to offer you are really fantastic and he's an amazing communicator. You'll see if you don't know Jack already, uh, he's really wonderful and he'll be here in just a second. I told him to wait a minute so we can get started. And He's here, but somehow I can't see him, but I can see him on Vicky's computer. Uh, I have a slow video thing on my computer. Hey, there's Jack Askew. Jack is here. Thank you. Thanks for the heads, Vicky. And um, perfect timing, Jack. I was just uh, telling everyone here that uh, one of the things I really like about you, there are many, but one of the most important is I think you're a great communicator, uh, both with uh, students and your peers, your colleagues, in this case, uh, teachers from around the world. So it's very exciting to bring you into this MOOC and to be working with you. And now I see you on my screen, so that's good. And uh, I haven't said anything about who you are, your background, anything like that. So um, I'll shut up. I know it's hard for me, but I'll do it. And I'll disappear, camera and audio gone. And then if you ever need me, I'll jump right back in. Thank you so much for coming. Teachers Worldwide, here is Mr. Jack Askew. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for the introduction, Jace. Um, firstly, can everybody hear me okay? Just need to see a, a yes, smiley faces, thumbs up. Perfect. Great. Um, one little technical problem I have at the moment is I can't see the presentation. Um, so I don't know if somebody could be working on that while I introduce myself. But yeah, I just can't see um, any presentation at the moment. So, but just to say to myself, um, I've been an online teacher for six, seven years now. And uh, I first started teaching online for a startup company from France. Moved to Spain for a couple of years, um, taught mainly business classes, but also children, teenagers, and adults in, in different formats. Um, and the last four years, I've been working online for my own language school, JDA English. So I've been giving one to one lessons to students. Um, just like to thank Jason and everyone at WizIQ for putting this together. I've learned a lot of things so far from all the great teachers here. Um, and also I'd like to thank everyone for doing the pre-class tasks. Some fantastic answers to the three questions that I asked. Um, so just wondering if uh, anyone has been able to fix the, the presentation as yet. Can everyone see the, the presentation on, on WizIQ? Can you all see it? Yes. 
Okay, so um, I guess a plan B is what I can do is... Oh, hi, Jess. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe you can, um, I'm, I'm trying to talk to Sandeep right now, but we can all see it. Maybe what you could do is just go out and come back in, because that often helps uh, if there's some connection problem. Uh, but that's very strange, okay. so yeah, why don't you try that, and uh, in the meantime, I'll see if I can find out from him uh, what it is. But that might solve the problem. <laughs> yeah, there's a door in the back. Yeah. You, can, you can exit and come back in. Just, just go out and come back in. Just take you one minute. I'll, I'll okay, and I guess moving. like a, I, I, I guess a plan B could be that I could have my presentation up on a different screen. I guess and, so, but it's very strange. You know, we're used to having video and audio cut out. I've never had it where you couldn't see the presentation when everyone else could. But I, I'm, I'll try to figure out what's up. But you never know. Going out, uh, Dr. Nell is at all. <laughs> uh, Sajid saying, please click on the second tab of the presentation. Can you click on the tab and let's see what happens. Are you moving it? If not, I'll move it. Are you no, trying to move it? Can't move it. Okay, I'm gonna move it and let's see. Do you see anything now? Now we're in slide two. Nope. No? All right, why don't you leave and come back? And okay. if that doesn't work, you can come in as a regular person and I'll give you the controls. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So I'll put you I'll be back on the first one and um I'll just I'll I'll keep the crowd the crowd going here. Okay. Great. <laughs> so crowd. I got to keep it going. Life is full of weird stuff, isn't it? <laughs> we can all share that experience of weird life right here. Oh, keep going. That's that's what I like to do. Um, what what did you what did you like about the pre-task? I really liked the questions Jack asked. Did anybody notice something else someone wrote? That they liked a, some, an answer someone gave that you remember. Why that was fast. <laughs> it was fast. Everything's just working. It's working perfect. And it's working. Yeah. Hey, it's that going and coming back thing. I didn't even get an answer to my question that I was asking, but you know what? It was. It, it's not as important as you starting here. Uh, but I'll just tell you so you know. I'm going back to the first slide, and then you can have control. I just said that I thought the pre-class was uh, questions were really well crafted, and you got some great responses. And I was just asking what what they liked about it. But take it away, Jack. Ask you. Thank you very much, Jason. So uh, hello again, everybody. Um, so this presentation is called "How to Effectively Use Online Tools and Resources with Your Students." Um, and this is going to be the heart of it, but the way I like to approach this is to think about, firstly, um, the problems learners have when improving their pronunciation. So there are certain problems that learners have, and I've highlighted two problems. Uh, the first problem is being, not being able to pronounce certain sounds in English. Um, not knowing how to do this and not being able physically with their mouth to pronounce these sounds. And the second problem I've highlighted is a lack of exposure, practice, and evaluation. Okay, so um, as I say, what we're going to do is approach this by uh, look at ways how we can solve these problems, um, what resources we can use to help with specific sounds. So I've particularly highlighted online resources, but there's also a couple of things that you can do in class too. Um, how we can use email and these other online tools to help our students solve these problems. Um, examples of how, how I have done this with my students in one-to-one -one classes. Um, and also, but the focus is going to be on group lessons. Now, just like to do a little poll, if I can, see if I can do this. Because um, I'd like to know, can you see this poll? Okay, can everyone see this? Okay, yeah, so we're starting to do it. The question is, do you um, predominantly teach one-to-one -one or group lessons? Okay, so the results are coming in. Um, looks like, yep, as I imagine, there's a total of, so far, 22 votes. And the majority of people in here um, predominantly teach group lessons, which is great, because the focus of this presentation is going to be uh, how you can help your students in group lessons. Okay, so let's 
end that poll now and move on to the next slide. So what we're going to do now is have a look at the first problem that I talked about. Um, and this is all about uh, unable to pronounce the different sounds in English. Um, so what we have here is I've highlighted a few examples from my experience uh, teaching one-to-one -one lessons, teaching in Spain, um, and just working with different students. And the first one, um, I asked, sorry, I asked this in the pre-class as well, talking about what type of uh, sounds your students have difficulties with. So I'd like you to see everyone put those sounds in chat again, just to see what we can, what we see. Yeah, the, the TH sound was very popular in the, the pre class A lot of people talked about this. Um, I'm going to give an example later of how we can help with this, the W sound. Um, the ones that I have, or the ones I remember specifically from Spain, are the T and D sounds for Spanish speakers. This isn't the most obvious example, but I use this one because I've been working with students recently on how they can make these sounds a lot better in English. Because a lot of the time what happens is if the sound isn't in the native language, then the learner will find the sound that is nearest to the English sound in their native language. And what we want to be able to do is, I will see later, is for our students to be able to make the native English sounds. Okay? A lot of people talked about vowels yeah, as well. Yeah, because I think your microphone, you might be tapping it or something is coming through your microphone, like a tap sound. I'm sorry to stop you, but it's getting really uh, a little bit loud. So I'm not sure if something's hitting the microphone or not. Okay, it's yeah, it's probably the desk here. Oh, the Drumming desk, away. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay. Okay, I'll try and stop that. So, yeah, the next thing is the vowel sounds. Now, the people say 15, some people say 27 different vowel sounds in English. Um, and a lot of these vowel sounds are in different people's uh, um, native language. Therefore, we need to be able to teach our students how to make these sounds. The most popular example, the R and L sound for Chinese speakers, um, Asian speakers in general. I use this example because I've worked with a lot of Chinese students recently, specifically one, uh, working on these R and L sounds. And it is a problem because unable to Uh, in the chat, if you have predominantly shy students, outgoing students, a combination of both, um, teenagers, definitely when I was teaching in Spain, teenagers especially were very shy and didn't want to speak up in class, didn't want to use their English in class. Um, adults too, um, especially I find in, as a group gets bigger with adults, it gets a lot more difficult for the students to be able to speak up in class. Uh, so shyness in the classroom is is kind of a, a big thing and also in traditional lessons the homework usually focuses on reading and writing and listening and speaking aren't really practiced at home so this this can be a problem for our english learners because they're not getting that practice they're not getting the evaluation and they're, they're not getting all the exposure they need to improve their listening and speaking um so that's a problem the two problems that I've highlighted. Let's go specifically about how we can solve these problems, um, looking at both, both of these two problems separately, and then later we'll get into the, the online uh, tools that we can use. So, firstly, I want to know what everybody's favorite sport is. Um, there's an analogy I want to use here. Judo. Oof, I can't use that as an analogy. More well, football. Thank you. Football. Um, any other sports that we have, favorite sports? Um, gymnastics, tennis, football, jigsaw, judo. Thanks for that, Jason. Swimming, tennis, another one. Um, well, I'm going to use, I was hoping someone was going to say basketball because I want to use this as an analogy, okay? Um, now, with when I was at school, 
basketball wasn't very popular in the UK, but we had one teacher who wanted to help us. So the first thing that he did was he told us how to shoot a basketball. Told us, if I remember correctly, straight on to the, the basket, keep everything straight, don't move your head, shoot with a follow through. So firstly, he taught us how to do it. Then he gave us the feedback by saying, Jack, stop, stop moving your head when you shoot, stop moving your head. So he gave us a feedback about how to shoot to basketball and the mistakes we were making. And then thirdly, he told us, go home, practice. So you know how to do it now. What you need to do is practice and build that muscle memory to be able to shoot the basketball during a game situation. Um, and I use this analogy because I feel it's quite similar for specific sounds in English. So as I say, to be able to say these sounds, we need to know how. Just like the basketball, I need to know what the, what the correct technique to use. And the teacher told me we can do this with our students. Feedback and evaluation. So when our students are saying sounds incorrectly, we can give them feedback. This can be specific as to say, open your mouth more, move your tongue here, or it could be more general by saying, um, you, you said this part correctly, go back through the information and try it again. And then the practice, the muscle memory, just like we're building muscle memory in sports, we can build muscle memory in our mouths. So we can improve our muscle memory in our mouths and make sure that we can make these sounds at any time, not just during when the teacher asks us to. Okay, so that's uh, how we can f solve the first problem. The next one is the more general, uh, more general exposure, practice, and feedback. Okay, um, with this one, what we can do is wait for the slides to come up. We can make pronunciation a part of every lesson. So if we're teaching the present perfect, we can use the contracted forms and help our students learn that. We can introduce linking words with the phrasal verbs, as we're going to see, see later. Um, so we can need to make pronunciation a part of every course. Give our students resources outside of the class, especially when we're thinking about a big group class with lots of people. For our students to be able to um, have more listening exposure and more pronunciation practice, we need to be able to give them resources for them to use outside the class. So it's um, not just about how we can give them inside, but give everything that we need for outside the class. And then the third point which we're going to look at, a great technique that we can use is we can evaluate our students in private outside the class. Okay, Very difficult in a group, as I mentioned before, to evaluate everyone. So if we can make this private outside the class, then we're, we, we can uh, help our students, the shy ones, but everyone in general, to be able to give them the feedback that they need. Okay, So let's have a look at the next slide now. Um, as this, the title of the pronunciation is all about using online tools, um, the way I see it is by using some form of blended learning, where we introduce online resources and online feedback and evaluation to our offline classes, to our more traditional classes. Okay, so this way we can easily give resources. We can send our uh, resources our students need outside the class. We can help, they can download materials from an email that we send or a link on a website. Um, it gives them this exposure practice and evaluation that I talked about. And also importantly, it gives us a great way to communicate with our students. So instead of just having this time where we only have two hours a week, one hour a week with a group of 15, 20 students, we're able to communicate with our students in a one-to-one -one way. Okay, um, so. To be able to do this, what we need is email. I love email. We can use email to, to communicate easily with our students, to send these resources, to give them all the resources and materials that they need. Um, social networks. Um, who here uses uh, Facebook with their lessons? Do, does anyone have um, a, like a secret group that they have on Facebook or Google Plus or anywhere else where they can have like a community. Yeah, this is a, an interesting um, few people here. 
a few secret groups. <laughs> um, so this is a great way that we can actually create community with our groups online. And a third way is having a website. What about um, anyone here that has a, a website for, for teaching, like an English teaching website? A few websites, a few secret groups. <laughs> Yeah, so um, these are a couple of ways that we can communicate with our students, but why? Because when you send an email, you know that your student receives it. You know that your student is going to receive their homework. Um, if you put it into a social network, then not everyone in the class has social network. Your website, then the problem is that you have to communicate with them to tell them when this is this is ready. So. Um, yeah, it's important to, in my opinion, to, to use email um, in this in this case. So let's move on and get into the heart of things now. We can talk about the resources that we need for specific sounds. So when I go through this, remember the analogy of uh, shooting the basketball. First, so let's have a little thing here. So the first one that we can use is a, a consonant chart. I'm going to show you this. Has anyone seen? this before. Has anyone seen this, this chart before? Okay, good. Good. Yep, a few of you have. Um, now, I've used this chart, or at least used it as a way to uh, mentally see what's happening with my Spanish students with the T and D sounds. So, I speak a little bit Spanish. Um, if you look at where the T and D is on here, you can see that the the manner of articulation is a stop, um, also known as an applosive. One of them is voiceless, one of them is voiced. Um, alveolar, uh, which is the little ridge behind your teeth. And this is the place of articulation, and this is where you, your tongue goes when you're making these sounds. So everyone just, just say the t, d, t, d, t, d. Okay. So you, you notice where your, your tongue hits the top of your mouth. Um, and also, what I want you to do now is to put your hand around your throat, not too tightly, just a little bit, and to say the t, the t, the. So you can tell that the, the T, there's no vibration. The D, you have the vibration there. Now, I know in Spanish that the T and D are more or less the same as in English, except for the place of articulation is on the teeth. It's a dental sound. Um, I also know that the R is um, alveolar, which means that I get I got my Spanish students to say some words in the Spanish R, for example, pero, and I asked them where their tongue hit in their mouth, and they told me just behind the teeth. So from this, what I can do is I say, okay, that's where I want your tongue to be when you pronounce the T and the D sound. Um, and then what, what was really great for my Spanish students is they understood this. This is something that they could use as a reference. So instead of saying the T and the D in, um, in the Spanish way, the dental, they moved it back a little bit and were, a were able to pronounce this correctly. Um, now, this requires some kind of knowledge of the native language, uh, the student's native language, and it requires a little bit of knowledge of knowing how to do things, okay? Um, so the next slide um, shows a way I help my Chinese students say the L and the R sound. And as you know, this is a very common um, mistake or very common error in, in Ch for Chinese students, Asian students. But I don't know any Chinese. I wasn't able to use this point of reference with these students. So um, what I did is I use these videos. Now, who knows this website? Who has used this website before? Who's seen this, this website before? Yep, Thomas again, good. Um, and exactly, it's interactive. Um, it's flash video. It's you can't see the link very well, um, unfortunately. But if you uh, click on the link later, you can go to this website. And what this does is it 
a video and it shows exactly what is happening inside the mouth for the different sounds of English. Um, so I've highlighted the R and the L sound. Now the middle video, when you play it, it does it really well. It just shows exactly what's happening with the tongue, the mouth, the lips, everything, the throat. And it helps your student uh, visualize what is happening in their mouth. And it gives them a really good point of reference to use to be able to make these specific sounds. So um, I also use this with a Spanish student who found it very difficult to say the shh sound. Shh. And this really helps the video on the right, because the video on the right shows the front on of the woman, what happens with her lips and her mouth when she, she says these sounds. Um, and I told him to go in front of the mirror, watch this video on an iPod, um, iPad, and uh, he was able to actually uh, look at the video and look at the mirror and go back and forth and pronounce this sound correctly. And it was just really good for him. Um, and it's exactly what he needed to be able to say this shh sound. So this is a really good website to use um, for your learners. And the other thing about this is you can introduce it in the class, but then also send it as a link for homework. Because as you know, like in a group lesson, people practice, but they need a lot more exposure. And it takes a lot of trial and error. It takes a lot of just figuring it out how to make these sound by watching the video practicing, watching the video and practicing. Um, so this is a really good resource to use. So next slide. Who recognizes this, this logo? First one wins a, a prize. Audacity, who got it? Yep, yeah, good. I didn't see who got it, but there's, there's no prize. I was, uh, I was just joking, but I'm sure Jason could find you something if uh, you really want a prize. Um, so this is Audacity. And this is really good to be able to record your own drills. So I use Audacity with my private students to be able to send drills, send them drills online. Um, and you can do this with the specific sounds as well. Just to give you some examples, um, all for one and one for all. So I used this with my Chinese student and gave her this drill among others so she could actually just practice in her spare time. Um, you can think about this as well with the, the specific sounds in your niche and come up with different drills. I think it, um, Jennifer's lesson, she talked about coming up with different lessons and she mentioned Audacity in this too. And just this program is so good and so easy to use. Um, guess what type of students I would give this to? I went to school, saw a snake, and felt stressed. What country do you think this is? Not sure. Okay, think a problem with the S, exactly. So this was for my Spanish students, because a lot of the time they say, I went to a school, saw a snake, and felt as stressed. Exactly, it's the ES. So we worked on these specific sounds with a couple of my students. I gave them this drill after they knew how to say the S sound and they practiced and practiced um, th these different drills. And then for everyone who has a problem with the TH sound, I have difficulty saying this myself. It's a tongue twister, but you can see all the different TH sounds in this. And this is another drill that your students can work on to be able to practice, okay? So um, these are three drill, drills that I came up with. I'm sure you can think of different drills for, for your students. So the next thing is sending these sounds. Who recognizes this logo? Not just a box. Dropbox. Good. Yeah, this is Dropbox. So I use Dropbox to send audio to all my students. Um, very easy to use because once you create these audio recordings, you have them in a file. If you link Dropbox with your computer, you can just drag and drop them into the, the, the file. Then within Dropbox, you can add the email addresses, send them over, or you can, if you have a list of emails and you just want to send it once, you can include the link to your recordings in there. Very easy to use. Okay, you can also upload them to your website. I used to do this, but since for, for the last year or so, I've just been using Dropbox because it's so easy to use. Okay, so we have 
sending these sounds. The next one is evaluating your students. Okay, who reckon who recognizes this logo? What what is this one? Not just cloud. Not cloud convert. Not cloud set. Nearly cloud sound. SoundCloud! Hey, <laughs> we got there. Good. Not so. Oh, SunCloud. I prefer that to be honest. SunCloud. Um, no, this is SoundCloud. And I uh, just want to say something here on this one is I came across SoundCloud from. Can't really see this link very well. Maybe I'll type it into the chat. It's the mimic method. And this is my uh, new friend, Idausa Ness, who is an incredible language teacher who teaches through music. Currently taking a French course with him. And he helped me set up the evaluation students with SoundCloud and taught me how to do this. Yeah, Jason, uh, giving him some love. He's an incredible person. And uh, I'll include some links to his stuff in the post class task too. So the idea with this is once your students have practiced or before they practice, you can evaluate them. Now, imagine a group of 20 students all doing these different drills for these specific sounds. And what we can say is, click this about a million times, one second. There it is. So the first thing that the students do is upload their recordings. And this is very easy to do because you can send them this link here. Um, well, you, so you send them a link and they come to this type of page. They just All they need to do is hit the record button and then they record their drill or whatever you want to send them into SoundCloud. And a lot of people think, you know, SoundCloud is only for music or podcasts and things like that. But it's such a great way to evaluate our students. The next point is you receive this audio into your email. You get a link in your email. You go on there and this is what you see. You see their recording. Um, and I don't know how this is a little bit smaller than... I think, can you see the uh, message that I've given there, end of it? So this is, what, what, what you can do is, in this audio recording, you can leave messages at any point that you want. So if your student made a mistake, for example, all for one and one for all, and they say the last all incorrectly, you can leave a message exactly at this point and tell your student um, or give them feedback at this stage. And the, the, the best thing about this is, imagine the, th the 20 students in the class, they all send you these audio recordings, um, you receive them one by one, and you can easily just go in there and evaluate them and give them the feedback privately, they receive it straight away, um, they'll receive a link about this feedback, so when they play the audio back, they can see the messages coming up. And it's a great way for your students to be able to, to get this, this feedback. Um, one thing about this as well, it's I thought it sounds like a long process, you know, evaluating every student and going through it, but it's so easy and so quick, especially if you do the same drills over again. You know what mistakes are going to make and you can easily give them feedback very quickly. So going on to the problem two, uh, more general exposure, practice and evaluation. Okay, so going to use a lot of these tools I've already talked about, but give them in the context of different lessons. Um, talked about the problems our students had before uh, in terms of too many students in a class, um, not being able to go to them individually and give them all this exposure practice evaluation. So I just want to give you an example of how we can um, introduce more pronunciation into our classes and give them more practice. So. Example using phrasal verbs, sort out, bring up, should be a comma, put up with. Um, this is, you think about this in a way of, you can go through the traditional teaching methods within your group. Um, think about how you would engage them to start with, give them some kind of dialogue or video presentation. They go and practice them, work in small groups. And the, a lot of it we, we talked about before is it's very normal at this stage to give written homework or some kind of exercise, go through a workbook. But what, what we can do instead is we can introduce an element of pronunciation, linking in this case, um, word stresses also. I give them the extra practice at home by 
making these recordings available for them. So we can maybe spend five, 10 minutes in the class talking about the linking, about how we link in English, relate it to the phrasal verbs, and then, one second, the click isn't working. Okay, here it is. Um, and then, so that, then what we can do is we can send them all of this information and evaluate them using SoundCloud, okay? Because, so this presentation, here we go. So we can record these different phrases. We've run out of it. Don't bring it up again. I've had to put up with it for too long. Um, I use this, these examples. I created a little dialogue of um, two housemates arguing about the milk running out. Don't bring it up again that I never do anything around the house. I've had to put up with it for too long. And you can recreate, create these recordings in context of a lesson where you, you know, a little bit angry. Don't bring it up again. Um, we've run out of it again. I've had to put up with it for too long. And it makes it, doing this, it makes it more real. And your students have a lot more fun by doing something like this. Um, so you can think about all the different phrases that you can record um, on Audacity. And just like we talked about the specific sounds, make these available through Dropbox. Um, then what we do is we send an email with the link for your students to download so they can have these and practice at home and then ask them to record these different phrases into SoundCloud and evaluate your students by one. Um, so that's an example of doing this with a phrasal verb lesson. Um, another example is, I'm trying to get this slide to go, Let's see if that works. Okay, another example I want to use is with a first conditional. And a lot of my Russian students really struggle with this tense. Um, they always say things like, if it will rain tomorrow, I won't go to the beach. So this is a tense that my Russian students have problems with. Um, in addition, they also have problems with intonation and linking, as we talked about before. So. They, they really struggle with these two areas of pronunciation. Um, who's seen the film Taken with Liam Neeson? One person. Anyone else? Yeah. Anyone else? Loved it. Good. Um, so, just want to introduce this because a lot of people talk about in the pre-class task, uh, pre about how we can use movies and how we can use um, television series and music as the exposure at home. So I used Taken as a good example of how I uh, help my students learn the first conditional, how they can practice the intonation and linking on their own and giving them feedback. Now, um, there's a scene in Taken where the guy, I think he's called Brian, his daughter and her friend, they go to Paris. And she's in the apartment with a friend talking on her dad's the phone. And then two guys come in to kidnap them. So her dad says, go under the bed, hide there and stay there. And they take her friend and everyone thinks that she's going to be okay and the, that the kidnappers are just going to go. Suddenly they take her and she drops a phone and the kidnappers pick it up. And it's this amazing scene when the, the whole film changes and and part of this, this scene, what happens is, he says this, if you let my daughter come now, that'll be the end of it. I will not look for you, I will not pursue you. But if you don't, I will look for you, I will find you, and I will kill you. So, this is what I gave my students to do to practice. They went on YouTube, they listened to this over and over again. And I said, what I want you to do is to upload this recording. Um, now, if you think that was spooky, um, waking up every morning to five or six Russian speakers telling me that they're going to hunt me down and kill me, it's, uh, it's not a good thing to have. So maybe you need to think about the actual example to use. Um, but this, it just made me laugh because they, they got into the, the whole character. And they, did, they weren't thinking about the whole first conditional. They weren't thinking about, oh, am I linking it correctly? They were just getting into this character and uh, really enjoying this experience. Okay.
So the the part of the link in here is end of it. And you saw before in my example with SoundCloud how um, I made this note to one of my students saying end of it. We need to link this this a lot better. So that's an example I used. And to bring it all together, the next slide is going to be about email. I'm trying to, there we go. So what we can do is use email to bring it all together. And you can use your regular email service provider. Um, so your regular email, but I prefer to use an, an email service provider. Um, there's some free versions of this. There's some ones that you have to pay maybe $19 a month, I think, at the moment. Um, all the other tools that I've talked about are completely free, and you can just use them easily. But with an email service provider, you can send homework and resources automatically before and after lessons. So you can plan your lessons for the week, write your emails within this email service provider, and have them automatically sent out once the lesson finishes. So you include all your resources and make sure your students have all of these. Um, we can also give them reminders about homework and lessons. So you can send a, an email reminder to everyone in the class before the lesson. You can um, also talk about, um, well, tell your students the ones that haven't sent their homework in already you can actually send them a reminder. So you make sure that they do their homework before they come to class. And then the last point is that talking about you can build your own list for the future. So if you're currently teaching in a, long, on, in a school that isn't online or just generally teaching, by getting people onto your email service provider list, um, you can have this list for later, which is great for just generally keeping in contact with people. Also, for if you want to go into online teaching in the future, or if you want to create a new website to see this, you can have this list to get um, to get in contact with your ex students very easily. Okay, so I think that is everything. So I want to say thank you for listening. Thank you for watching this presentation. Um, I've got a free ebook for everyone too, and this is an ebook on how to teach online. And the link is here. And I'll put that in the, the notes at the end. So thanks again. And hello, yeah. Jason. Well, hello. <laughs> I'm glad we have some time uh, for question and answers. Because I think it would be really uh, great for people, especially at this while you see people enjoyed your, your class. Really great suggestions, very clearly explained. Um, as usual, we'll put up the slides. So don't worry if you think it was too fast. Uh, also good to watch the recording later, um, to, to especially if you're not a native speaker and you're a teacher and you want that experience. Uh, but also the slides will be up, uh, so you'll be able to look at the links that he has there and his suggestions at your own pace. And we can see, thank you, Dr. Nelly Deutsch. Oh, she's doing the creative course on WizIQ. That's a very good link. Any links that are coming up now, uh, don't worry. You can, uh, Tom will also copy the chat box, so we'll have that. And Jack can add anything in the pre-class uh, task. And as everyone knows now, although we have new people, we have a lot of people joining today, everybody. Actually, at one point, we had uh, between 11 and 11.30, we had like 17 new people join the MOOC today. So it's really exciting. We shouldn't assume uh, that everyone knows everything by now. Some people are just coming in. The pre-class chat, is a great place to continue uh, the discussions uh, that you're having already after you've seen the, the uh, Jack's class because many people will be watching the recording after anyway. And, and so going in there and Jack uh, can put any links there that he knows we want to, uh, that he referred to and that you can go right from the class chat. But let's have some questions and answers. A lot of people like your accent. I know that, Jack. They like I, the I, Manchester I, accent. Well, it's not Manchester. That's a big. That's important. No, I was watching the chat, um, the chat box, and I saw Birmingham, and I think Thomas got it right by saying Lancashire. Lancashire, right. Uh, and it's uh, specifically Preston. Preston. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, 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 for for so, you guys, it's like it's like it's like the grapes in France or something. You know, you can get like more 
more specific than the regions and things. So exactly. to me, you know, it's hard. I, I don't, I don't. <laughs> but it's a big difference in accents, yeah. To to me, anyway. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, how about some some questions? Can you ask Jack if he can create a course on this on Wiz IQ? I'm one step ahead of you, Dr. Nelly. Yeah, he, he he's already working on that. <laughs> Dr. Nelly's one step ahead of me in most cases, but I'm one step of, one step ahead of her in this one. Any questions about Jack personally, professionally, about anything you saw here? It's nice to have uh, this time left. We usually don't. I want to take advantage of this by slowing it down and seeing if you have any questions. Does he work online? Jack, do you work online? Yep. Um, all online. So I have the teaching website for my students, um, which at the moment only doing one-to-one -one lessons, but going into group lessons next year, and this is where he comes in. Um, and also I have a blog, which I gave the link to, um, where I help other teachers who want to move online and want to, at the moment I, I'm writing a book about how you can teach one-to-one -one lessons. And the ebook that I have in here is a, like a mini guide to this and gives a lot of great information about how you can do this too. So I help other teachers um, who want to go online and teach. So the blog, which is great, and uh, actually I was lucky to get a vlog, a guest vlog there. So I'd love you to check out uh, that I, I worked with Jack on one post. Jack, the name of blog is? Um, I'll put it into the, it's teaching yep. ESL online. Yeah, it's teaching ESL online dot com is his address. It's a great address. Teaching ESL online dot com. Mm -hmm. And Jack is a very busy teacher. He's very popular and it's really exciting. Uh, only ESL? I believe no, no. It's one of the situations where um, I was desperate to get started, wanted to get a new name, and felt ESL in America anyway. It kind of covers a lot of people use ESL instead of EFL, but it, it means do, both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, great, <laughs> we great Jack again, but not not in the Preston Guild. I see. All right, oh, you're gonna have. This is amazing. Um, the Preston Guild is uh, once every years. Um, in Spain, people ask me like, uh, "Do you have any festivals in the UK?" Because in Spain they have them like seems like every week in summer. And I said, "No, I think we have a festival every 20." So the next one's going to wow. be 2032. So it's just uh, an incredible thing. Um, but you must make the most of it when you have it then. Yeah, you do. Um, although I couldn't make it back last year, uh, unfortunately. So I hope to make the next so one. Miss, Saving it's, up yes, it. it's, it's rather like missing a comet or something, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, we have some other good questions here. Um, one is, let's do the e uh, easy questions first. How to get in touch with you, someone asked. I think that was Dora, but now you know. Uh, teaching ESL online. And we'll put that up. the best way to get, get in touch with, with Jack Eskin. I call him uh, North Kakalaka Jack. That's a hint. Yep, which is obvious that it's uh, North Carolina. <laughs> um, and it's in, well, specifically in a place called Asheville, um, which is an incredible small town in the mountains. Um, great culture here. Everyone who lives here now is generally from a different area so it's got a great community of people um if you like beer it's the best place in the world because it has local breweries i just um, learned from jack yesterday so i'm very excited uh now i really want to visit <laughs> i'm a big beer guy so a beer guy a beer guy located in france for the year so uh i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to visit you to get my beer fix yeah it's the place to be Another question, Jack, um, is what languages do you speak? Um, so I have inter an intermediate level of Spanish, and I've just started learning French because um, my parents moved to France last, no, three, four years ago. Um, so just I want to know a little bit of French, especially because they live in a quite a small village. 
and uh, it's just great to know, obviously, to be able to speak with people there. Great. Uh, another question, really interesting question, uh, and one you could you could come at it in different ways. But what is your philosophy of education? Um, well, the way I like to approach it, and the way I've been approaching it with my one-to-one -one students is to inspire them, to show them how they can self-learn and give them all the resources and tools they need to be able to make process progress outside the class. Um, I know this is a big thing in my opinion because a lot of people come to me originally thinking, okay, two lessons a week, I'm going to make great progress, that's all I need to do. But I try to get across in that time and use that time in the most efficient way to tell them and to show them how they can make progress and to put the power into their hands, basically. That's great. And and we're just so fortunate, people who have that kind of thinking like you do right now with the tools that can be used outside the classroom. So as you pointed out, students don't get enough uh, input speaking for speaking and listening, but now uh, they really can. And the, the key is to give them the knowledge of how to do that and more more importantly, most importantly, motivate them, get them you know, confident, excited to do that, all of a sudden, what used to be the worst part, most people would say about language learning, the homework, uh, can be the most fun part. Exactly. Uh, so that really works with what your philosophy is, I think. No? Yeah. Definitely, definitely. And uh, not using, I'm trying to not use the word, the word homework as well in classes, because it always creates a negative feeling, thinking it's something you have to do. A task. So, yeah. yeah, well, you could. Uh, I mean, what you're doing, if you're doing blended learning focus, which you did today, is you're just continuing the project. <laughs> you know, whatever you're doing, it doesn't have to be called homework. I agree. Just don't do what they did at one of my one of my kids' schools. They they were trying to call it fun work. Yeah. <laughs> so, that, that it has. Is, <laughs> It's like saying you have to have fun with this homework. Yeah, exactly, you must have fun. Exactly, exactly. That's what happened. It backfired. That that's that's the uh, risk you take when you have a euphemism uh, yeah. like that. <laughs> it is. Uh, yes, it's an oxymoron. Exactly. Oh, Vicky Holland said that. Hey, who wants to say? Vicky? Oh, hello. <laughs> we are really making our tightening our circle here, uh, physically and uh, uh, online here. Fantastic stuff. Another question, please. Jack, do you think being excellent in one's native language helps being excellent in foreign languages? Hmm. No, not necessarily. Like, uh, in terms of excellent knowledge of the language, I think it can help if you have like the, the grammar knowledge of your own uh, language so you can compare and contrast and know what's happening. But no, not necessarily. I don't think so. That's a great question. I, I, I see the most, of, in my experience, it's how you come into it as a language teacher. So some people, I would put myself in the category of, I think all of us are interested in different facets of this because there's so many wonderful facets of, of teaching another language um, and being with learners learning another language. But definitely for me, I got into it most because of, but then I've been around other people who is because they you know their love for foreign languages or their love for culture love for learning. how about you jack is there one uh i mean it's it's not just one thing for me but is there one area that has is most appealing or brought you in most to what you do yeah it's um i find this interesting because when i first started started teaching english it was more out of necessity being able to do something which i could do uh, in different countries because I wanted to travel. Um, but then I fell in love with languages and teaching in general. Um, and I think for me, it's it's just the communication, the, the communication with other people in different languages. And I also like um, having, well, inspiring people in general. I like working with people specifically. So seeing people progress and their passion for English comes into the class and I can help them um, achieve their goals. I think it's really such a rewarding experience. So there's another thing if uh, for anyone who's not that familiar with online education, I know most of us are, but many people will be watching this video. Not only 
it, you know, Jack's philosophy of education makes the online teaching and using tools, uh, it helps with that. But also, he wants to meet lots of people and, and work and inspire lots of people. And that's something so, you know, uh, extraordinary about teaching online is having the ability to, to communicate with so many more people than you ever if you're just in a physical classroom. Sir Tom from Liverpool in Venezuela would like to know how you got to North Kakalaka. North Kakalaka, by the way, since you're from the UK, is not mainstream slang. Uh, that is, it is, it is much more of a hip hop slang thing. I don't know if, if you know that or if you heard that. But anyway, you're North Kakalaka, Jack. And how did you get there? Um, the wife, the wife brought me here. She's uh, <laughs> American. I met her when I was traveling in Ecuador in 2007. And we spent a little bit of time in Athens, Georgia, when she was fin finishing college Spain for a couple of years. And then we wanted to go, and it seemed the perfect place for us because she knew of the area. We wanted to live on the East Coast. Um, and yeah, we moved here three years ago now. Great. Okay, uh, I was going to end the class on time. It looks like Sandeep gave us more minutes because he knows me. I usually forget to extend the time. Um, but, I, but I think we can end on time, which would just be in a, about two or three minutes. Any other questions before we sign off here, everybody? Thumbs up for Jack. Stars for Jack. <laughs> Claps for Jack. <laughs> Jack, it's great. it's great to have you with us. It's great that this is just the beginning of working with you, working together. Um, it's, it, I'm, I'm really excited by the success you've had uh, both with teaching one-on-one -on -one online and even more importantly for what, for what I'm doing and where we connect is how you've been able to mentor others to try to get them uh, online. And uh, the ideas you have are, are superb and just look forward to working with you more. You too, Jace. Yeah, and thanks again for putting all this together, and everyone at WizIQ. It's been a, it's a great course, and I've been recommended to all my uh, teachers that I come in contact with. So it's just been, been, it's been a lot. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's just it's really great that we're all bonding as presenters and facilitators and participants all at once. It's really exciting where where we can take all this continuous continual learning so good please go to the pre-task uh, even if you've been there before you'll see other people responding and this is where we're learning so much so jack's pre-task also with his slides available so they'll be up in our courseware a post task from jack will be coming soon i just posted justin's uh ajifa is coming um and yeah and then uh who am I forgetting? Ah, Carissa Peck, of course. So I'm kind of staggering those. Um, so everything will be available. If you don't see it, it's coming soon. You can always message me, as many of you do, which is fine. I like getting those messages. I'll message you right back. Take care. Have a great day. Check us out tomorrow. We have Sean Bonville of Breaking News English. And we have Chuck Sand of ITVI coming. We have a really uh, action-packed weekend. So please stay tuned right here. <laughs> North Kakalaka Jack. Thanks a million, Bye. my friend. Goodbye, next. everybody. Thanks for the energy, all the participants. That's what's really making this thing work at the end of the day. So thank you so much for making it work. <laughs> Big hugs to Vicky and Jay. Vicky, say goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I'll give them lots of good hugs, especially because they're, they're, they're feeding me and, and, and putting me up here. So I got to make sure to give them lots of hugs. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Have a great day. Have a great evening, wherever you are. Bye.